following program contains material that is not suitable for children. Viewer discretion is advised. Live from the Community Media Center in Marin, it's Marin Sanity. Yes, yes! How we doing guys, we feeling good? Yeah. Feeling good? It's, uh, it's good to be here tonight. I, uh, to be honest with you, I didn't think I was gonna make the show. No, like a few weeks ago, I th <laughs> somebody didn't want me here, okay. But no, really, like a few weeks ago, right, I thought for sure I was gonna win the Powerball. Right. Oh. Huh? Have you seen the jackpot? 1.5 billion? Mm -hmm. I went crazy, man. I went around town buying tickets. I went to my wife's work, hopped in her office lottery pool. All of our coworkers are like, what are we gonna do when we win the millions? What are we gonna buy? And I was like, whoa, there's all this we talk. <laughs> <laughs> we win the millions, I'm gonna show you guys never see me again. <laughs> and we got home that night, my wife was like, can you believe those guys at work? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna buy? <laughs> they don't even know us. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what is all this us talk? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I am married. I am married. Uh, we just celebrate our eight-year wedding anniversary, guys. Thank you. Uh, for a gift, I got her flowers, and uh, I got her wine. Yeah, and she got me a Fitbit. <laughs> uh -huh. Cold-blooded, right? A Fitbit. Like now, we both have Fitbits. Okay, like so, we're keeping track of our numbers. We're gambling on it. You know who has the most steps at the end of the week. Like if I win, if I have the most steps, I win. She has to go downtown on me. <laughs> yeah, and if I lose, <laughs> hey, and if I lose, I have to stop asking her to go downtown on me. <laughs> I got caught cheating last week, though. Yeah, I put the Fitbit on the dog. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised how many steps can be taken when you leave the gate open. <laughs> I'll, say, I'll see you in a couple days, boy. <laughs> uh, I had a comedian friend of mine. He was trying to be funny. He was telling me, he's like, hey, Sam, dude. Uh, make sure to take that Fitbit off if you're going to masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, dude, it doesn't work like that. And then I went home, went online to make sure it didn't work like that. Because <laughs> wouldn't that be sad? You know, Sunday morning, my wife and I are going over the numbers. Uh, babe, Wednesday night, like at 2 in the morning. <laughs> did you walk to China? <laughs> <laughs> and back? <laughs> You guys are good. <laughs> good group, good group. Let's see here. Uh, we got uh, ladies in the house. Let me hear, ladies. Ladies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I brought out the set list. Yeah. Uh, any married people in the house? Married people? <laughs> About a hundred of you. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. I. Uh, my wife is, um, I'm married. My wife's seven years older than I am. Yeah. Thank you. It's pretty funny, right? The other night she was bragging, rubbing it in my face how she's going to retire first. Yeah, I totally let her have her moment, too. You know, I mean, really, what am I going to do? Bring up her funeral? <laughs> okay, this is my kind of crowd. This is my kind of crowd. But you know what? I know I'm getting older. I know I am, man. From the conversations I'm having lately, the other day I was talking to my brother on the phone for an hour and a half about child car safety. No. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's come to, right? He was telling me the safest place to put a booster seat or a car seat is right behind the driver's seat. Because if you're in an accident, the driver automatically pulls away, right? I'm like, dude, that totally makes sense. Only bad thing is, I have two kids. Oh. <laughs> How do I make that decision, you know? <laughs> Honey, did you clean your room today? <laughs> no? Okay, I'm gonna need you to switch spots with your sister. <laughs> I don't want to go to the kill zone, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you need to learn to pick up a dustpan. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what I'm saying here. My youngest daughter, she's, uh, she's the greatest. Man, our favorite show, me and her, we watched Ghost Hunters. You guys know the ghost? Sh yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was probably a ghost in the studio <laughs> here. <laughs> clapping. Uh, but we watched, like two weeks ago, man, we watched a 24-hour marathon of Ghost Hunters. That's a lot of episodes. Yeah, I learned one thing, man. Ghost only speak English. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? They all say the same thing. Get out. <laughs> I've yet to see one ghost be like, Dallas, they are key. 
Okay, guys, I did get the red light. Uh, which means I have to wrap it up. It's either that or a sniper's about to blast my ass. <laughs> but before I get out of here, guys, before we get this show going, uh, I want to let you know one thing. I, um, I'm the next big thing, folks. Oh, that wasn't a fat joke. That's uh, <laughs> that was on the real lady. No way. Really. But really, are you guys ready to continue this show and get it? Yeah. Get it yeah. All right, guys. Listen, your uh, your first comedian. She performs all over the West Coast. Produces several shows in San Francisco. Please put a warm welcome, Liz Stone. Everybody, let her hear. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, this weekend, I was thinking about signing up to train for a marathon because I wanted to do something physically challenging. But then I thought about it, and I realized I've already done something just as hard. I masturbated without a vibrator. <laughs> and as far as I can tell, that is basically the same as running a marathon, okay? <laughs> for those of you who don't know, here's how it goes. I was 10 minutes in, and I'm like, oh, man, I am tired already. <laughs> already broke a sweat. I've got a cramp in a leg muscle that I never knew existed before, but I'm going to keep going. <laughs> and I kept going, and I was like, oh, no. I, it is four hours to the finish line, and I'm out of nipple cream. This is not fun. <laughs> and. I, I'm telling you guys, I just slogged through it, and I wasn't enjoying it. I just wanted to be able to say that I made it all the way through. <laughs> and I finally got there, and I was like, man, I am never doing that again unless I have a friend who gets cancer and I train with a team, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I, I graduated from law school, and people go to law school for all different reasons, right? Some people want to lock up criminals. Some people want to save the environment. I like designer clothes, and they're not <laughs> cheap. So, and, and I was basically born and bred to be a lawyer. When I was little, my mom would go to parent-teacher conferences, and the teachers were like, oh, Mrs. Stone, you have got to send your daughter to law school. And my mom thought that was great, but she didn't realize that's teacher code for your kid's an asshole. <laughs> right? The teacher's like... Nobody likes her. She doesn't <laughs> seem to care. Normally for people this low on the empathy scale, we recommend engineering, but your daughter sucks at math. <laughs> and that's how you grow up to become a corporate lawyer. <laughs> and I, I found out that being a corporate lawyer is not a good job because there's way too much paperwork. And, and when I first started, I was like, I'm going to care about every single detail. And two years in, I was like, oh, man. You know, I just don't think it should take four hearings and a 25-page brief to drive a family out of their home, right? <laughs> I just think the whole judicial process needs to be more streamlined. You should be able to take a picture of the family and drag it across the computer screen into the trash bin. Because <laughs> who wants to live in Stockton anyways? <laughs> Guys, I hate incompetent people. I think incompetent people across the board are the worst. Unless it's a rapist, right? <laughs> because... <laughs> Because if you're going to run into a rapist, you want to run into one who can't get the job done, you know? <laughs> now, now, I happen to have a super fun rape story. And, <laughs> and it's true. Now, y you don't have to get uncomfortable, trust me, because I win this story. It ends in tears, but they're not mine. So it's a good one. And, you know... I have a rape story because I'm a woman who went to college. <laughs> but, but my story is really fun because I encountered the most incompetent rapist of all time. Okay? Now, I was in college asleep after a party, and I woke up to this guy trying to bone me, and I'm like, no, no, no. And I rolled over and went back to sleep. And then I woke up to it a second time, and I bolted awake. Now, I understand you might be thinking, why didn't you bolt awake after the first time? 
but I went to University of Virginia, and you adjust your standards in the South. <laughs> but, <laughs> but this is where I found out that this guy just couldn't get anything right. First of all, I pushed this guy off of me with one arm. Look at me. <laughs> I am very petite. If I can push you off of me with one arm, you should not be pursuing violent crime, <laughs> right? You need to redirect that criminal energy, consider the white collar route, think about tax fraud, maybe a Ponzi <laughs> scheme, something where you don't need to be able to do a push up, okay? And then I aggressively confronted this guy about why what he was doing was wrong, and he started crying. <laughs> I know, it's like the, so sad. It's like the only thing worse than rape is a white frat boy who can't get what he wants, you know? <laughs> and this was the point where I noticed the music he'd put on for this. <laughs> which was the soundtrack to the musical Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> I know, terrible choice, right? Now, I don't know what the best rape soundtrack would be if you go to Spotify and you're looking for an upbeat Saturday night playlist or maybe a more Thursday night acoustic mellow rape soundtrack. I don't know what all the songs on there are. I definitely think there's some R. Kelly in there somewhere. <laughs> but I can tell you this, there's no Broadway musical, okay? And by the way, Phantom of the Opera was not even relevant in this time period, okay? <laughs> It was 1998. If he just put on Sarah McLaughlin, it would have been consensual immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Wow. laughs> you know, this guy leaves in tears devastated, and I come out feeling great about my bouncer skills. But here's the thing, I don't know what happened to this guy, right? I don't know where he is now, and what worries me is he might be out there in the world making more money than me. <laughs> because I wanna know how that's happening. I am type A and I have my shit together. That guy can't pull off an easy basic crime, okay? So how is this guy making more money than me, right? He's definitely not doing anything physical. He's not a pro athlete. We know he's not in sales because he's not a closer. <laughs> and he's definitely not a DJ. So if I get a LinkedIn request one day and I find out that guy is some high-flying CEO making millions, then I will be traumatized, okay? <laughs> then I will put on Phantom of the Opera and slip my wrist in the bathtub, which is what that music is meant for. <laughs> Guys, before I get out of here, I'll just leave you with this. My grandparents were recently diagnosed with glaucoma. They're in their late 80s, which means they got a prescription for medical marijuana, which sounds amazing, right? But they're depression era stoners. They don't share. <laughs> and my grandmother went to the dispensary for the first time, and she looked around, and she's like, oh my goodness. I had no idea so many young people have glaucoma. <laughs> All right, you guys, that's my time. I'm Liz Stone. Thank you so much. Keep it going, everybody. Liz Stone, let her hear it. Yeah. Great job, great job. All right. Very awesome. Our, uh, our next performer, uh, he was a finalist uh, <coughs> for the Rooster Teeth Feathers Comedy Competition. He won the Walk the Plank Comedy Competition. Give it up, please welcome Chad Opitz, everybody. Let him hear it. Hello, Marin. Hi. Thank you for coming out tonight. Came here all the way from Santa Cruz to be here with you folks. Got a nice little jaunt up here. I was listening to some tunes on the way. And I think I found the perfect song to play during a threesome. <laughs> it's got to be Randy Newman's You've Got a Friend in Me. <laughs> you know, keep things light and playful. 
for, for any tryst, in my opinion. Uh, I've been getting some bad news in my life a lot recently. Uh, I lost my job, which is no good, so I have to come up with some alternate means of income. So I've got some concepts I want to run past you, okay? <laughs> One is a game show I want to try and develop. It'd be trivia contestants battling it out, answering questions pertaining to the 80s in order to win an ounce of cocaine. <laughs> and I want to call it Whose Line Is It Anyways? <laughs> I think that's not a bad idea. Uh, I was also looking up food from other cultures. I read that some countries eat donkey burgers. I've never seen a donkey burger restaurant. Here in the U.S., I'm going to open up the first one, and I'm going to call it ass to mouth. <laughs> I think. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, this is awesome. You don't, you know, beautiful, real brick behind you. It's. A gorgeous venue, lovely place. Uh, it's very cool to perform in a spot like this because a lot of times we're performing in very scuzzy, dingy dive bars, which aren't without their charms. Like one of my favorite things to do if I'm performing in a spot like that, I like to go into the men's restroom and whisper motivational quotes through the glory holes. <laughs> you know, just be like, if they can't handle you at your worst, they don't deserve you at your best, pal. <laughs> yeah. Raise some spirits that way. Uh, but I was doing a show recently, and there was an 80s dance party after the comedy, and I love 80s music, and I was out there busting a rug, <laughs> and this guy comes up, he taps me on the shoulder, and he goes, hey man, do you want a party? <laughs> 80s style. <laughs> Which is a little scary, but God damn it, yes, I do, yes. <laughs> so we both reach into our jacket pockets at the same time. He pulls out a little baggie of cocaine. I'm holding on to a VHS tape of Breakfast Club. <laughs> you know, I just party a little bit differently, I guess. <clears throat> I got hit on recently, which, uh, thank you, <laughs> sir. Uh, you're my target audience, honestly. Like, it's usually lady, not ladies that are hitting on me. It's large, burly gentlemen <laughs> that enjoy what nature hath dealt here. <laughs> and that is the case here. A nice older gentleman comes into my work. He's chatting me up for a little bit. And then he drops this on, uh, on me, he goes, hey, I'm staying over at the Best Western. <laughs> How about you come by later? We can have some cookies in my jacuzzi. <laughs> Do you know how hard that was to turn down? Holy <laughs> Lord, that sounds nice. That sounds super nice. Uh, it sounds like it would be the most comfortable, uncomfortable experience of my life. <laughs> like if I didn't think there'd be sex involved, I'd be completely on board with that scenario. That sounds great. I almost want to say yes just if we made a movie. I'd be like, what? I thought this was a completely innocent suds and snickerdoodle situation, sir. I made you think there'd be sex involved. Here for the bubbles and baked goods, buddy. <laughs> I watch a lot of movies. Uh, I had worked at a movie theater. I love movies. My, one of my favorite movies this past year was the new Mission Impossible. Anybody see the new Mission Impossible movie? It was really good. It was very cool. Especially now considering Tom Cruise insists on doing all of his own stunts. And they're like crazy, danger, like Jackie Chan level insane shit. And I think it's because Tom Cruise finally realizes that death is the only way out of the Church of Scientology. <laughs> it's gotta be it. It's gotta be it. <clears throat> uh, before the marriage equality ruling this past summer, I was at a pride parade in Santa Cruz and I saw a woman holding up a sign that threw me for a loop because it said, two women kissing is hot, two married women kissing is hotter, legalize gay marriage and make a frat boy's day. <laughs> like, is that the target demographic for that issue? <laughs> are there a lot of frat guys at parties who are like, oh, shoot, dude, dude, do you see those two chicks making out over there? That is hot. Be a whole lot harder if I knew they were an illegally binding union, bro. <laughs> yeah, I don't see any rings on those fingers. This is gross. Ugh. <laughs> Not into this at all. Looking for some commitment, pal. <laughs> uh, so down in Santa Cruz, it's one of those towns where they always try and tat it up as like a very nutty, weird place. But to this day, the weirdest thing I've ever seen, there was just an advertisement, their weekly zine, which is called The Good Times. And all this ad said was, do you like bowling? Do you value free speech? 
Well, then come on down to the Bardwalk Bowl. I'm just like, what the hell is the connection? I'd wake up in the middle of the night with free speech. But where do they intersect? What are you talking about? But in that regard, it was an amazing ad because it made me want to go down and see what the hell was happening. Like, I expected to walk in, see, like, the KKK next to the Black Panthers, Namble on a lane next to the Boy Scouts. There's an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting going on. This is an open-minded bowling alley. And I want to see more ads that were like that one. They're just confusing but lured you in, you know? And you're like, hey, do you like racquetball, swimming, weightlifting? Does actor Ryan Gosling make you question your sexuality? Well, then come on down to Gold's Gym. <laughs> like, what? Hey, do you like organic meats, cheeses, and produce? You think 9-11 was an inside job? Well, then come on down to Trader Joe's. Like, what the hell? Oh, there's all sorts of crazy <laughs> advertising slogans that make no sense and are goofy and silly and over the top. And I have an absolute favorite one, which I saw in a bottle of Coors Light, the utterly unremarkable beverage Coors Light. It said the following statement, experience the legendary taste <laughs> of Coors Light. <laughs> what are these legends, guys? What would they be? Odin! Thrust his staff to the heart of the snake head Medusa. And then chugged a cold, crisp, cool as life. <laughs> the mighty Thor swung his hammer to the parts of the seas with Poseidon himself. And then knocked back a cold, delicious. Cool as life. <laughs> the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth, attended a wedding party in Galilee. <laughs> when their alcoholic libations had run dry, Christ performed his, dare I say, most refreshing miracle. <laughs> he turned mere water not into some boring, bourgeois, bullshit wine. No, no, far from it. He turned it into something as ice cold and satisfying as the Rockies themselves. <laughs> and the power of Christ compelled those partygoers to spend the rest of their night slamming <laughs> the cold, legendary days of cold life. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Chad, open to everybody. One more time. Let him hear it. I want to buy him a Coors Light. That's what I want to do. <laughs> All right. You guys are warming up. You guys are warmed up, baby. Feeling good. Okay, your next performer, uh, she's a regular at every major club in the Bay Area. Uh, she just signed a deal with HBO. Uh, please make some noise for Nicole Kalashis, everybody. Hey, what's up, everybody? Let's give it up for lies, for introductions. Give it up for lying. I forgot I said that. Uh, let's talk about something that's really going on. I want to be real with you guys and be honest. I am freaking out right now. I'm so anxious. I can't even tell you like how bad it is. Maybe you're with me. Maybe you know the experience. I drank a large Phil's coffee earlier today <laughs> and my heart is beating like faster than Chad at the height of his closing <laughs> joke right now. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I feel like every time I drink a cup of Phil's coffee or any coffee really, it's like I start a race between my brain and my butthole to see who can be the most productive. <laughs> and it's like, of course I'm going to be horrifyingly anxious because one way or another, I'm about to start some shit and I'm freaking the F out about it. I love that I just censored F but not shit for you. Very mixed. Give it up for like Harry Potter grandma over here. You look, I didn't even catch that from behind. You, s you still got it. Uh, just among us muggles. Um, Hey, you guys, if you're making six figures tonight, make some noise for yourselves. Come on, six figures. Oh, 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 this is Marin. Don't lie to me. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I feel like you're lying, definitely, because I know you personally. 
Drew, you're not, but you're taken, so you can't be my future husband. I'm not making six figures. I wish I was, because I'm still taking the bus, you guys. That's right, taking the bus. Anyone else taking the bus here? <laughs> I know you drive an Audi, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you quit that. I'm taking the bus, but I'm not ashamed of it. It's not even about being broke. Dude, I do it for the company, you guys. I got a whole bus squad. Maybe you know some of my friends, right? Like, there's dude who's always peeing himself in his own seat. <laughs> That's like my Thursday, Friday, boo. Or maybe you know my other friend, homeless lady, screaming racial slurs <laughs> at a blind guy's dog. Oh, it's just like, like a second mother to me. <laughs> but my favorite person has to be dude with his headphones in, getting totally lost in his Spotify playlist getting taken away by the jam. <laughs> For Kelly, it would be Hamilton. But <laughs> this dude is my favorite guy. Now, I sent some hesitation from over here. Like, maybe you know you've been the jam guy on the bus. You've been the one with the headphones in getting crazy. Don't worry about it. I've been the jam guy on the bus, and it's okay. I love that guy. That guy, like, it's always the same how it goes, right? Like, the headphones go in, right? The melody starts. The eyes close because that's your song. And it's going. It's starting. <laughs> it starts with a little bit of, like, head nodding side to side, maybe like a shoulder shimmy here and there. <laughs> no big deal. No one notices. It's just you and the music right now, right? <laughs> And then maybe the bus hits a bump, like right when the beat drops, and you're like, oh, hell yeah. And then you're going hard in public on the bus. Like you're trying to grind, but you're seated, so it looks hella awkward. I love that guy. He's my favorite. My favorite thing to do with him, though, is to just wait, to sit across from him and wait till his eyes open, make direct eye contact, and just do the same dance <laughs> right back at him. Like, it's a public bus, but it's a private club with this experience, you know what I mean? I can't recommend this game enough. You gotta try it. But you should know it can backfire, because I did this the other day on a different line, and I was like, ah, it's my jam guy. He's swaying. I'm swaying with him. And then I realized, oh my god, that dude just has Parkinson's disease. <laughs> yes, exactly. I had to shut down the club immediately, you guys. A horrible shame spiral I went through. I feel like I'm never going to emotionally recover from that shame, but probably more so than he'll recover from that terrible disease. <laughs> I know. <laughs> At least two of those shakes were disapproval. <laughs> I couldn't look him in the eyes, mostly because he can't stay still. <laughs> So besides being a terrible person, I'm also a Latin gal. I'm Latina. I say it like that so you know it's real. Uh, I'm Latina, and, uh, you know, I feel like I was kind of a shitty Latina last year. I'll own it. I was a bad Latina because I missed Hispanic Heritage Month. I blew it. It just breezed on by. Clap if you knew when Hispanic Heritage Month was. Oh. <laughs> Oh my God, Gringo Diablos. Kelly, when was it? Do you know? Uh, it starts in the middle of September and goes through the middle of October. And isn't that some bullshit? That's right. That's right. We don't even get the quality experience. Hispanic Heritage Month runs from September 15th through October 15th. Congratulations. You're the only audience member who's ever really known that. <laughs> Kelly is doing Cesar Chavez's dream for all of us. That's true. It runs from September 15th through October 15th. I don't know if you heard you guys, but that's not a real fucking month. <laughs> sure, it's got all the same properties of a real month. There's 30 days in there. I'll give you that. But as far as I'm concerned, that's like the Walgreens generic brand of celebrating heritage <laughs> and culture. I was thinking about it. Who we would choose this year? Like, who would be the spokesperson? Who would be the poster child for Hispanic Heritage Month? Like, who deserves that spot in cultural reverence since Selena? And I just like drew a blank. I was like, who matters that much? Pff, fucking no one right now, man. But then I thought, maybe, maybe like, like a living celebrity. And I was like, maybe Sofia Vergara, right? I think she's really cool. I think she's the, the chick from Modern Family. You're already eye rolling that thought. But I was like, <laughs> I was like, she's really funny, I think. And she's like, I think she's a babe. I think she could be a good choice. But then I thought to myself, man, am I just saying that because I really like her? Or am I thinking that because she's so hot? And then I thought to myself, is this what it feels like 
to be a man. <laughs> and I reached a dimension of empathy I never thought possible <laughs> as a feminist. That joke ends with the word feminist, which is a great choice in comedy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't say that because there's much of a punchline to it. I just enjoy watching a whole room of people simultaneously lose their boners and shit their pants. <laughs> I think this is the power Angela Davis was talking about. Thanks, you guys. That's my time. I've been Nicole Kalasich. Give it up again for Sam. Keep it going. Nicole Kalasich, everybody. Guys, you have been a wonderful crowd. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Uh, Marin Sanity, this is where it's at, man. Until next time, guys. Thank you, and good night. <laughs>